Good day, this is Dr. Ron McFarland with the Cybersecurity Update. And this cybersecurity update is for professionals, researchers, students, and learners of IT, IS, and cybersecurity of all types. Okay, we have three topics to discuss today. The Emotet botnet started distributing quantum and black cat ransomware. Those are two different types. We'll talk about that. Number two, Microsoft warns of large-scale click fraud campaign targeting gamers. And the third one, don't mean to be picking on Microsoft today, but Microsoft Teams gift shell attack what it is and how you can protect against it. A few notes now. Again, as I mentioned earlier, this presentation or the series of cybersecurity update presentations are for all of us in the cybersecurity field, including professionals who actually do it. Uh, educational purposes, if you're going to a class and you're uh, doing some courses, certification training, which training and certification kind of go hand in hand, or just general interest if you're peeking in and wondering what cybersecurity is all about. A focus is really what we can learn from these cyber incidents. That's why I'm only presenting, if you will, uh, let me check my microphone. I think I might be over spiking it. There it goes. Um, it, the focus is on what we can learn from these cyber incidents. There's a lot of cybersecurity updates that might list 10, 15, 20 per week. I'm just cherry picking items that we can learn a little bit more about and how those are used. That same type of pattern is used throughout the industry. The copyright of any materials is under the fair use. Information for these presentations are gathered from publicly available sources. There's no sensitive information presented here. I provide the links to the content at the end of this PowerPoint, but I also will post them in the YouTube notes area as well. Item one, Emotet botnet started distributing quantum and black cat ransomware, two different variations or flavors of ransomware. Now Emotet malware, it was a botnet, is now being leveraged by ransomware as a service, or AAS groups, including Quantum and Black Cat after Conti's official retirement from the threat landscape this past year. Now, as a note, the Conti ransomware operation was shut down last year in January and split into smaller groups. Conti, the notorious cybercrime gang, officially took down its attack infrastructure in conjunction with law enforcement, breathing down their back in favor of um, migrating their malicious cyber activities to other ancillary operations, including Caracat and Black Fight. Emotet started off as a banking Trojan in about 2014, but updates added over time have transformed uh, this malware into a potent threat that's capable of downloading other payloads onto the victim's machine, which would allow the attacker to control it remotely. And think about command and control and C. Compromised credential attacks are a kind of cyber attack in which malicious actors use a list of compromised credentials to attempt to log into a wide range of online accounts. Oftentimes, these compromised credentials are found, paid for, on the dark web. The goal of the attack is, of course, like so many others, is to steal personal and or financial information from the compromised account or to take it over altogether. Malware distribution. Malicious software or malware can be distributed in many different ways. Malware may be sent via email attachments or may be placed in downloadable files on the internet or may be installed when a computer user follows a link to a website. A couple other items. Exploiting vulnerabilities. An exploit is a special crafted code that adversaries use to take advantage of certain vulnerabilities and compromises that a resource may have. Exploit kits, on the other hand, are tools embedded in compromised web pages which automatically scan a visitor's machine for those vulnerabilities and then attempt to exploit them. A post-exploitation tool refers to any actions taken after a session is open. A session is open from a shell from a successful exploit or a brute force attack. Now looking at Conti, quote, Conti affiliates use a variety of initial attack vectors including phishing, compromised credentials, malware distribution, and exploiting vulnerabilities, uh, which was noted in the cybersecurity report last month. Now ESET, another cybersecurity company, great company by the way, uh, previously reported a hundredfold jump in Emotet detections during the first four months of 2022 in comparison to the preceding four months from September to December. So a hundred fold increase in a four month period of time. Contrast this with uh, the Israeli cybersecurity company Checkpoint. Emotet dropped from first to fifth place uh, in August, 2022. So that tells you, even though Emotet took a hundred fold jump initially, other players are coming into play, including Formbook, Agent Tesla, XM Rig and GU Loader. A couple of key terms I want to go over. RAS, ransomware as a service, is a business model. It's similar to SaaS. Uh, you pay X number of dollars for that service. 
oftentimes the RAS service has a cost sharing where, as an example, if you provide a certain number of emails and if they get ransomware from those emails, you cost share of some way, shape, or form. Pretty ingenious, huh? CNC, command and control, we've talked about that, where a server controls a list of host computers that are infected. It can download and even exfiltrate data from those host computers. Data extortion, bottom line, something like ransomware, where files are being held in lieu of payment. Uh, there's, this is a little more of a formal definition. It, data extortion needs to directly or indirectly demand, accept, bribe, facilitate payment, or a kickback or other payment by threat of force, etc. Other items are phishing. We've talked about phishing. Phishing is a cyber crime. It poses as a legitimate institution to kind of lure individuals into providing sensitive data. Compromised credential attacks are a kind of cyber attack in which malicious actors use lists of compromised credentials to attempt to log into a wide range of online accounts. Item number two, Microsoft warns of large-scale click fraud campaign targeting gamers. I wanted to bring this up because many of us are gamers. So Microsoft has said it's tracking ongoing large-scale attack click fraud campaign targeting us gamers by means of stealthily deployed browser extensions. I love that stealthily deployed on compromised systems. Now quote, the attackers monetize clicks generated by a browser node WebKit or a malicious browser extension secretly installed in devices. Now, Microsoft Security Division has noted this as the Dev 0796 warning. Here's an attack chain to the right-hand side. It's pretty traditional in terms of an attack vector that a command and control would use. Attack chains mounted by the adversary commence when an ISO file that's downloaded onto a victim machine upon clicking it and the contents uh, are op then open or a link in YouTube. An ISO file when opened is designed to install a browser node webkit aka nw.js or a rogue browser extension. It's worth noting that ISO file masquerades as hacks and cheats for the crunker first person shooter game. Cheats are programs that help gamers, as we all know, gain an added advantage beyond the available capabilities during gameplay. Now, ask Apple Disk as well, the DMG files could also be compromised for the Mac OS system. A campaign that lures gamers looking for cheats on YouTube into downloading the self-propagating malware uh, capable of installing crypto miners and other malicious code is the focus of this Microsoft large-scale click fraud campaign. Quote, malware and unwanted software distributed as cheat programs stand out as a particular threat to gamers, security, especially those who are keen on popular game series. And that's Kapersky, a Russian cybersecurity company. Few key items, stealthily deployed browser extensions. I love this, but I got to say this. It's one of those wonky terms, but uh, the browser extension can add a feature to an existing site or change how the site displays Stealth is implied that it's a hidden deployment behind the scenes. Uh, browser node WebKit. The WebKit is open source. It's a Weber engine that we leverage it as hackers or actually as coders in general. A malicious browser extension, just what it says. Browsers are one of the most used methods of accessing organizational personal vulnerability will become much more rampant. The second item, browser node WebKit. The WebKit.exe is not a Windows core file, but that's part of this whole attack vector. The process starts when Windows starts. Now, let's see registry key run. The program has no visible window. Uh, the node WebKit.exe executable file is able to manipulate other programs, monitor applications, and record keyboard and mouse inputs. What could go wrong, right? NWJS is a framework for building uh, desktop applications with HTML, CSS, cascading style sheets, and JavaScript. So it's out there, but it's leverage for the bad in this scenario. Other key terms, ISO file and DMG files. Bottom line, ISO files uh, is one single file that contains either an entire CD, DVD, or BD. A DMG is for the Mac, Mac OS, in a similar context as well. Item three, Microsoft Teams, GIF shell attack. What it is? and how you can protect yourself from it. The risk is also brought on by configurations in SaaS apps that have not been hardened. The newly published GIF shell attack method, which occurs through Microsoft Teams, and I know many of us do use Teams, I use it on occasion, uh, is an example of how threat actors can exploit legitimate features and configurations that have not been correctly set, correctly hardened. Gift shell attack technique enables bad actors to exploit several Microsoft Teams features and to act as a command and control for malware and exfiltrate data potentially using GIFs 
without being detected by EDR and other network monitoring tools. This attack method requires a device that the user has, and that device has already been compromised in one shape or form. The main component of this attack allows the attacker to create a reverse shell that delivers malicious commands via base64 encoded GIFs in Teams and exfiltrates the output through GIFs retrieved by Microsoft's own infrastructure. So how does it work? Number one, compromise a computer to plant the malware just as in any other command and control attack, which means the bad actor needs to convince the user to install a malicious stager, like with phishing, for example, that executes commands and uploads commands via a GIF URL to a Microsoft Teams webhook. So that whole implementation is done in that fashion. Number two, the threat actor creates their own Microsoft Teams tenant and contacts other Microsoft Teams user outside of the organization, again, using command and control. The threat actor then can use a GIF shell, Python, script to send messages to a Microsoft team user that contains a specially crafted GIF, a GIF that keeps on giving, right? The legitimate GIF image has been modified to include commands to execute on a target's machine. Now think of steganography, uh, which we do go into in uh, the CEH course. Number three, when a target receives the message, the message and the GIF will be stored in the Microsoft Teams logs. Important to note, Microsoft Teams runs on a background process, so the GIF does not even need to be opened by the user to receive the attacker's commands to execute. Kind of a hidden way of doing things. Again, the stager monitors the team's log, and when it finds a GIF, it extracts and runs the commands. Interestingly to know is Microsoft server servers connect back to the attacker server's URL, and this is a common command and control. It will then retrieve the GIF file, which is named using base64 encoded output binary to text of the executed command. The GIF shell server, the GIF shell server running the attacker server, will receive the request and automatically will decode it. Now, Microsoft just this slide just basically says. It's not a high priority on their list. Uh, basically, it's an event that should uh, be resolved by hardening a system. I think, in a way, the way this is approached, Microsoft, I know, is very busy, but there's some fixes they can do. Here's what they suggest. You go and disable external access. So here's a team screenshot. You disable it. I think Microsoft should have it already implemented as disabled when you receive it right out of the box. And then if you want it enabled, then you go in and enable it. Just my two cents. Also, disable external domain access so you prevent your people in the organization from reaching out to others, and you disable any unmanaged external Teams conversation so you block your Teams users in your organization from communicating with external Teams users. Also, uh, I think best practice is to not only implement XDR, EDR vulnerability management solution that kind of add additional layer to uh, the user devices. Endpoint security tools are our first line of defense against GIF shell and other uh, malicious environments, if you will. In addition to XDR, EDR, add another layer, integrate SSPM's SAS security posture management. It's a way that uh, devices and computers that connect to SAS environments, such as uh, Teams, or in our case, we use Salesforce. That extra layer kind of monitors uh, user devices and other features that the users might have set up and uh, will flag the sysadmin if something seems to be a little bit wonky. Here's an example of an SSPM solution right here. This is the Adaptive Shield. And as you can see from all the whiz bang cool things on uh, the dashboard right there. You can set up flags that will notify you as a sysadmin if something is not set right when a user accesses um, an SAS, SAAS environment. So that would be a good posture. There's a mention that Microsoft also said you can manually uh, detect these environments. I think that's crazy insane whenever you get into management of information systems, networks, and you're trying to do it manually. Nothing gets done only because so much has to be done. Let a tool do it. SSPM uh, actually is a fantastic way to look at SAS to SAS access. Also, SAS to IAM, the security posture of individual users. The particular device to SAS connections. Uh, the user risk and compliance. And both industry and company standards can be dialed in to those portals. Again, I'm adding, I'm suggesting an addition of another layer, another product, if you will. But at least it will allow us to enable security to be at the user 
device level still. Key terms, SaaS, software as a service, cloud-based, we use it, I've mentioned it, keep that in mind. Hardening refers to providing various means of protection in a computer system, in tools that we use, again with the Microsoft thing, the last one, I think I think they should have uh, delivered it um, already hardened. And if you wanted it opened up, then you have that option. Uh, gift shell attack, we talked about that. Another type of shell attack, command and control, CNC for malware. And I put on this next slide, I kind of broke this down. I, I am is the identity and access management. It's a framework of policies, processes, and technologies. I think of, whenever I think of I am, I also think of Microsoft Active Directory, where you set up your role-based access control and the additional security, if you will. XDR, EDR, vulnerability management, kind of go with the same bundle. XDR is extended detection and response. It's a newer approach. EDR is endpoint detection and response. Matter of fact, we mentioned ESET and one of the um, advisories here, one of the items here. Uh, uh, ESET does provide an EDR solutions uh, solution as well as other vendors. And that's a wrap here. Please, any thoughts, comments, any feedback, send me a note, post something in the comments. I'd love to hear back from you. Please like, share, and subscribe. It'll give you notifications. It'll also let me know. <laughs> I know right now I'm only hitting 20 people. And my intention is to maybe get it up to 100, 200 people for this channel, only to provide cybersecurity information. Certainly, I'm not going to get rich off of this <laughs> by no stretch of the imagination. I just like sharing this content. Cybersecurity is a wonderful field for all of us. I'm glad that you're listening to this. Um, spread the word. We need so many more folks engaged in this. And that's why I'm doing this. So keep in contact. Again, my contact information is also listed in the YouTube channel. I do provide these references. If you're looking for more research information, if you're a student, or if you have additional questions about anything I've talked about, here's the links. It'll be in the YouTube area as well. And there you go. So thank you so much for your time and your effort. Spread the word. Uh, I want to make sure that we get the open 750,000 jobs in the United States filled. So thank you so much. Take care.